All right, welcome back to the channel. So Jerron Ennis is again calling out Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, and the rest of the top five welterweights for 2021 and says his skills on another planet, this after coming off being named the Ring Magazine Prospect of the Year. Ring Magazine got something right, kind of. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So Jerron Ennis had two really serious wins last year. One was um, a, a stellar knockout. The other was a knockout that was on its way to happening, but the guy had butted himself out the ring when he fought uh, Chris Van Heerden for the IBO welterweight championship of the world. That is, of course, as Jerron boots Ennis out of the – out of the great city of Philadelphia. Great fighting history there. Bernard Hopkins came out of there. Danny Garcia came out of there. Joe Frazier fought out of the rings, uh, out of the, out of the uh, fought in a uh, trained out of Philadelphia. Came up from, I do believe, South Carolina into Philadelphia. But just a very, I think Hurricane, is Henry Kane Carter from Philadelphia? But just a whole lot of great fighters from, the, from Philadelphia. And I believe that Jerron Ennis is the next one and is really uh, probably the most talented guy in boxing at 160, 154, or 147 pounds, the weight classes that he most likely is going to travail during his career. Now, he uh, says that he is ready for Errol Spence Jr., that he's ready for Terrence Crawford, and he's ready for him in 2021. Now, are those fights going to happen? No, they're not going to happen. And the reason that they're not going to happen is, one, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford are way at the top and already embroiled in a lot of different matchup that these, matchups that these guys can have and fights that need to be made, right? So, like, Errol Spence has the fight with Terrence Crawford. He has the fight with Manny Pacquiao. He has the fight if he, that he says he wants, and then if he wants, he deserves because he's done enough to earn it with, with Canelo Alvarez, right? Terrence Crawford has... has the fight with Manny Pacquiao that he wants, that he's not getting. The fight with Errol Spence Jr. that he wants, that he, I think he can get if he plays right, right? And then the other, you know, well-established 147-pounders that fans like myself want to see Terrence Crawford fight. So those two fights obviously are not going to happen for Jerron in this, this year. So why, Fanon, are you telling me this? Why, in one of your first videos of the year, are you? do you think it's important to tell me that Jerron Ennis says he's ready for Errol and Terrence Crawford right now if you know the fight's not going to happen this year? Let's talk about something that can happen. No. Let me tell you why I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it so you guys don't catch a case of amnesia in the second half of this year coming up. When I start talking about how Jerron Ennis, like, Danny Garcia needs to fight him. Sean Porter needs to fight him. Keith Thurman needs to fight him. Errol needs to fight him. When we get to that stage, which is very close for Jerron Ennis, I want it to be known, at least on this channel, that I was very, very clear in saying, yeah, I think this dude is as ready for Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Crawford, Keith Thurman, or any of those other guys as anybody that is not in that group is. He's the best uh, he's the best of the prospects of the new up-and-coming 147-pounders. And right now, he is too much for 99.9% .9 of the 147-pounders in the world. This second. Now, is he? It, it, there are ways, I'm sure, that he can get better, things that he can work on and improve. But mark my words, people are going to act like when, when he starts laying people out, right? And he can say he gets in, he was going to lay Chris Van Heerden out. Like, that's just... Chris Van Heerden was just, you could hear he was relieved when, oh man, God, thank you. This cut is, how big is the cut? Oh, it's going to end the fight. Thank God. Is it going to be a no contest? Yeah, it's going to be a no contest. All right. Thank you, Lord. Because that was going to be a brutal beating. Woo! That's what Chris Van Heerden was, was doing, getting up out of that fight. Okay? He was going night-night. Thomas DeLorme was going to get whooped the same way. All right? So now it's like, all right, who are you going to fight? The Danny Garcias? Because Danny Garcia... Hey, if you're not going to move up to 154 and you're going to get another title shot, he should have to get through Boots to get another title shot. Okay, I'm hoping Boots can get in a position to be a WBC mandatory, a WBO mandatory, whatever. But it, but when that happens and he starts seriously stepping up to these guys and saying he wants this fight, 
I don't want people to act like they got amnesia, especially when we get to the, to, to the point where the major fight for him and his age group is, right? And so Jerron Ennis right now is saying that he's ready for the top guys at 147. You know and I know, and Sean Porter has said this, that they're not going to want to fight him. Okay, they're gonna say, "Oh no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get your come up off me, young man." Like, like, no, I see where you are. I see what you can do. No, 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 no. You're way too fresh for me, and you're way too talented. And yeah, you're gonna dominate this division for a long time. So you're gonna make your name beating up somebody else, not named Danny Garcia. You're gonna make your money, not making. You're gonna make. You're gonna get to the level, uh, not beating up somebody named me. And that's the attitude that they're gonna take. So when they take that attitude, with that atti- and that attitude is going to be taken, what, where does that leave Jerron? It leaves Jerron not having fought any of those guys and then having a new crew of 147 pounders who are more close, who are older than him still, but closer to his age, acting as if he doesn't exist. You will see a guy like, uh, t- like Jose Ramirez, and Josh Taylor move up to 147 where Jerron Ennis is. And then the conversations are going to become, oh, no, who has he fought? Look at what Josh Taylor did. Look how he beat Regis Progre. Look how he beat Postal. Uh, what, is, what has Jerron Ennis done to deserve the fight with Josh Taylor? What has Jerron Ennis done to deserve the fight with Virgil Ortiz? I mean, look what Virgil Ortiz has done. That stuff. You know, that's why I'm saying it loud. That's why I'm saying his name clear. And I may be saying his name, according to some people, saying it a little earlier, saying, no, he's ready for these guys, because I do believe he's ready for these guys. But I believe that they're the top five guys. But I also believe that there's a chance that I'm wrong, right? Because I've not seen him in with those guys yet. So I know that I could be wrong. But if he doesn't fight them, if he doesn't get those names on his resume, when those other guys come up to 147, they're all just going to duck him. And they're all going to claim that he's not the best there. And it's going to be Gary Russell Jr. at 126 all over again, where you have Josh Warrington flying up past the guy, uh, say, oh, I'm the number one guy at 126. Why? Why are you the number one guy at 126 when everybody left the weight division? Everybody, Gary Russell was there when the guy that you, that you got the belt from was there, and he was there before him. And the guy you beat never fought him. None of these other guys at 126 ever fought him. So how can you say that you're the best at 130 and you know you can't beat Gary Russell Jr.? Well, get ready for that same thing to happen to Jerron Ennis if people do not draw attention to it quickly. He will be the longest reigning 147-pound champion in, uh, in boxing, and he will fight a tough mandatory, then a voluntary that he can get his hands on, then a tough, vo- then a tough mandatory, then another voluntary that he can get his hands on, and he'll get ducked by those guys if we don't stand up and start talking about how good this guy is ahead of time. And that's my take, because that's the guy. When Jerron Ennis is at the top of Jerron Ennis' game, it's not going to be against guys like Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao. Um, It's not. Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, it's not. Because the guy's 23 years old. When he's in his prime at 28, that's five years from now. These guys are all in their late 30s. Five years from now, though, Josh Taylor, who's at 30, is going to be 32, 33 years old. Jose Ramirez is going to be 31, 32 years old. Those guys are going to be at welterweight. Virgil or, uh, excuse me, Lee, uh, Tiafimo Lopez. If Tiafimo Lopez is a bad sandwich away from 147, okay, he's going to be at 147. And, um, and if we do not give these guys force some other people to fight Jerron, have him in. There's other guys that are in that same scenario too, like Chris Colbert at 130. Chris Colbert could probably could beat, I know at least one champion that Chris Colbert can beat at 130 right now, for sure. And that's Jojo Diaz. You think he's going to get that fight? No, because they're going to say, what? Who has he fought? So that he never gets a chance to fight him, so that they then can say again, who did he fight? Right? And then when they don't fight, when they say, oh, no, we don't need the fight, that fight, and then say something, then, then um, uh, we're talking about Jerron Ennis. So Jerron Ennis then goes fight somebody else. Ah, you just don't fight anything but anybody but bums. But 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 Virgil won't fight him. So what? That's because he don't fight him any any bum, but bums. Well, who's Virgil fighting? Virgil's just fighting a bum. Well, so what? That's just because that's Virgil. He's the cash cow and nobody else. No, nah, this is a serious fight Virgil's in. That type of stuff is going to pop off. Believe it. Because Jerron Ennis will beat the brakes off of Virgil Ortiz. And Virgil Ortiz is the next. But Virgil Ortiz very well might beat the brakes off all those guys at 140. 
it's going to be interesting to see how this stuff plays out. Anyway, you let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out.